Fitch Solutions Ghana inflation 2024 consumer outlook indicates a positive trend as inflation is projected to ease to 20.8% by the end of 2024, significantly down from 54.1% to December 2022. With an average inflation rate of 22.1% for the year, the report notes that declining food prices could relieve household spending, where food accounts for over 42% of expenditures. However, inflationary pressures in essential areas like housing, utilities and transport continue to rise, posing challenges for consumers. While improvements are on the horizon, significant hurdles remain for Ghanaian households as they navigate the economic landscape. This morning from Accra, Ghana, Isaac Agye, who is a financial analyst from SBM Intelligence, joins me. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show. Great to be here. Now, Isaac, given Fitch Solutions projection of about 20.8% inflation rate for Ghana by the end of 2024, uh, what specific factors would you say contributed to this and how would that further impact consumer confidence and um, the spending patterns? Well, Ghana's inflation uh, at the moment, if you ask anybody uh, that do they really feel that the uh, you know, general rise in price of goods and services has actually reduced from that peak of 54% in December 2022 to the current uh, 20s that we have. Generally, what you the, the general feeling you feel is that this has not really, really impacted, uh, you know, household in terms of uh, they having their disposable incomes back because the figures we currently have are not really reflecting in an improved, uh, you know, livelihoods of households where uh, even the, I, the uh, you know, uh, producer inflation is still around 29%. And if you look at the top 20 items driving inflation, and most of them are food items. And the fact that you have food items such as gari beans, uh, cabbage, uh, tomatoes, and even pepper all have an inflation rate above the national average of 20, uh, you know, percent. All of them are having rates such as 30 percent. And even in the top bracket, you can have uh, food items like cabbage all having inflation somewhere around 50 uh, percent. So. If you speak to Ghanaians and you you, you you tell an ordinary Ghanaian that, I mean, inflation is coming down, so uh, you should have a, an improvement in your disposable income, the general answer you get is that they are not really feeling uh, the downward trend in terms of the inflation figures. Uh, that's quite interesting because um, we had an initial average of 12.4% between 2015 and 2019 in terms of inflation before it now picked about 54.1% in December 2022. And um, if we are looking at the major influencer that has to do with um, food prices, um, not uh, according to what you've said, uh, seeing a reduction and um, we're seeing an inflation that is said to be easing. So that means there's a disparity between what we're seeing and um, that report is not a true reflection of what obtains um, in Ghana. Is that um, how we can put it safely? Absolutely. The, the easing has to do with the figures, but knowing the reality, it will take some time for Ghanaians to actually feel the reality, especially household. Ghanaians keep spending more than 50% of their income on food. And you cannot explain that since the figures are coming down, there's, there's an improvement. And the reason why it is so difficult for households to feel this impact has to do with uh, the forex, you know, uh, the exchange rate situation currently uh, in Ghana. So you have inflation coming down, but Ghanaians are still struggling because the CD is losing its value against major traded currencies such as the dollar. And since the beginning of the year, the city has lost more than 25% of its value against the dollar. So there's that, you know, um, washing away of that positive impact that household would have had. And so you could see the figures coming down, but in reality, households in Ghana are still really struggling to, uh, to even uh, prepare, um, you know, their favorite food, such as even jollof rice, which is currently living at the dining table. And households are looking at alternatives such as gari, which even in the July 2024 report has had an inflation rate of more than 30% uh, in the month of July. Uh, so uh, talking about um, these um, food prices and the logistics around um, transportation and all, I'd like to find out, are there actually challenges um, looking at the supply chain, aside the forex issues for those who may need to import? Um, 
or maybe shortages you know, some in, in the supply chain that is also um, holding the economy back and stifling um, the food price uh, markets, so to speak, and probably increasing um, the uh, figures as we've seen? Well, definitely there are challenges. And the challenges, like, to me, it's not about transportation. It's about what is going on in the forex zones of Ghana, where most of our food, you know, baskets actually is as a country where we plant or we get majority of our food produce, which currently, because of the illegal mining going on in Ghana, you have, uh, you know, galamseyes or illegal miners taking over farms or, or lands that were supposed to be used for the cultivation of tomatoes, cabbage, and what have you, other staples, uh, you know, like uh, tubers like cassava and even yam. And so it has to do with the illegal mining going on in Ghana. It is really, really affecting availability of food and supply. Where in some regions like the Western Ashanti and even the Eastern region that serves as the country's food bank is currently facing significant, uh, you know, negative impact of the illegal mine where majority of the lands are now being turned into mining sites illegally. And water bodies are being polluted, lands are being polluted. So it's not just affecting cocoa, but it's also affecting, uh, you know, the food items that find themselves on the dining table, like, you know, the tomatoes and the cassava that we've been used in the preparation of gari. So illegal mining in Ghana is one major factor that is really, really affecting uh, the supply of food items here in Ghana. All right, so uh, during the restructuring process, Ghana recently, you know, secured a $3 million bailout from IMF. And one of the um, key factors, um, of course, uh, from the Ghanaian government to actually improve the country's economy was to uh, improve the value of the agricultural space. So would it mean that that particular bailout uh, from IMF um, didn't do anything significant for Ghana in that regard? Or maybe uh, the Ghanaian government didn't really um, do as what it had actually promised in terms of um, investing in ag agricultural space to improve the values? Well, Ghana is really, really behind in their great space. And the reason why I will not really blame this on the current IMF program is that this is a prolonged issue. It, that, it didn't start right from 2022 when we started having our current economic crisis. It dates back to even the fourth, when the Fourth Republic even began, or I should say independence. And so it's a structural issue. And the reason why the current IMF program will not really add a significant component is the fact that we've not really solved the structural issues that exist for such a beautiful program that we currently have to even have such a positive impact. And so you can't really blame it on the IMF program, uh, which I would say that it is not a program that was imposed up, uh, on Ghana by the, the fund, but rather it was a program drafted by the government of Ghana, which they called the post-COVID economic recovery program, which is supposed to be implemented by the government of Ghana and have support, funding support and technical support from the IMF. But because of the structural challenges that we have, we've not really been able to benefit in terms of the Greek uh, side. And the, the, I made mention of illegal mining, which is really, really a big problem here in Ghana, making it very difficult for such policies to even run. And you have people not going into to farming again because it's no longer becoming lucrative. They are, no storage facilities being provided by government for farmers to store their, their, uh, their produce to even attract higher prices. And all of these are affecting, uh, you know, supply and creating that huge discrepancy between demand and supply, where we even have to import about, you know, we have, have to spend about $38 million to import tomatoes and these other products into the country every year, pepper and even yam and what have you. These are food items that we can e easily cultivate here in Ghana, but because of some of these structural issues uh, where the government even introduced what they call the planting for food and job program, which they spend close to $75 million every year on that you know, project, but has not really, really yielded the impact that Ghanaians really wanted. When that program started, inflation was in a single digit. Now we are talking about double di the digit, you know, nearing 30% in terms of the food items. And even if you single out some of the food uh, items like yam that I made mention of, all of them have been raised above the national average. So the government has come in uh, to, to put in place policies like the planting for food and jobs, spending $75 million on average every year, but has not really, really had the impact that they, they really wanted because 
of the structural issues and galamse or illegal mining is a major factor. All right. Uh, from all you've said, Isaac, it would mean that um, the 20.8 percent uh, Fitch ratings uh, for inflation in the country might not be realistic at the end of 2024. After all, if we are going to look at it realistically. But then thank you, Isaac Agui, financial analyst from SBM Intelligence. It was nice talking to you.